Many of the tallest buildings in the world are iconic and symbolic for both the cities and the countries where they're being built. The energy of the Roaring Twenties is manifested in the Empire State Building, the representation of not just uh, the city of New York, but the whole country as a whole. Buildings are responsible for about a third of the greenhouse gas emissions in New York State. And we have millions of old buildings. Retrofitting existing buildings is probably one of our most formidable climate challenges. The icons of urban life are at the center of policies to slow climate change. In 2019, New York City enacted Local Law 97, which places carbon caps on most large buildings. Within years, the city will find buildings for exceeding those caps. And at the state level, lawmakers are hoping to make New York a leader in large-scale retrofitting. The 90-year-old Empire State Building provides a template for environmentally conscious renovations. That's the one that people are looking at and what do they do and how are they measuring themselves against that building. In 2010, the Empire State Building completed the first phase of an extensive retrofit. Within a decade, the retrofit slashed the building's energy usage by more than 40%, and it saved the high-rise more than $4 million each year. We moved to a program to reposition the building in a dynamic way as a leader in energy efficiency, building health, and indoor environmental quality as a way to differentiate to attract better tenants, better credits, longer lease terms. There's no silver bullet, it's silver buckshot. It's lots of different pieces that work together. We've done a tremendous amount of work with our tenants um, to do things like lower the energy usage associated with lighting, equipment, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. One of the things that we did was to retrofit all of the windows in the building. We have 6,514 windows. We reused over 96% of the existing materials. We added a pane of suspended coated film, which manages heat gain in the summer and heat loss in the winter. We added insulation behind all of our radiators. We upgraded the entire central plant, which is, which is a pillar plant. It provides all the cooling. We reused the uh, shells of these giant machines, and we gutted them and rebuilt them on site. We decided to replace our elevators with the destination dispatch type of system which actually uses regenerative braking instead of just friction braking that generates heat, it generates electricity. There is no shortcut. You have to look at all the systems in a building and you have to look at the behavior of the human beings that occupy that building. These are lessons that we've learned that not everyone knows yet. Um, and these are, you know, we, we intend to inform policy with our successful practice and also help other building owners um, to get to the point where we are and hopefully to get to the point we, where we will be. What the Empire State Building did uh, a decade ago was pioneering and really led a green building movement. And um, this needs to continue and we actually need to even go further and deeper we think about all the buildings we need to retrofit, the, the big ones and the small ones. You know, we need to be retrofitting 200 buildings a day, every day for the next 12,000 days. The magnitude of the transformation that we need in our economy really does require action at every level of government. Our goals in the state are to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 40% by 2030 and 85% by mid-century. The Empire Building Challenge is a first-of-a-kind public-private partnership to make New York a global hub for low-carbon and environmentally sustainable building solutions. We selected 10 partners who we will work through in this public private partnership to demonstrate low carbon technologies, low carbon solutions in high rise buildings through 
these early demonstrations, we will start to learn more about how a building owner can decarbonize a high-rise building. We will only be successful if we actually show that those low carbon solutions, whether it's low carbon buildings or a carbon free power grid, that that is a, um, a, a better system for people that's better, that creates economic opportunity. And it's a better system that other entities want to replicate, whether it's throughout the country, whether it's throughout the globe, but that's the transformation that, that we need.